This is Friday, November 22, 2013. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's Continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Marie Claire Maxfield White. Welcome, Claire. Thank you. May I ask when you were born? December 9th, 1921. And where were you born? In Lemonster, Massachusetts. And where do you currently live? In Stowe, Massachusetts. Your marital status? I am a widow now. Do you have children? Yes, I had six children. Mm -hmm. And grandchildren? I have five grandchildren. Let's go for another one. Great-grandchildren? <laughs> I had two. I have two. So tell us a little bit about what Lemonster was like growing up. Well, it was a small town, mm -hmm. and I lived in the French-Canadian section. We had the church there, and we had a school, and I attended uh, St. Cecilia's Grammar School and uh, went to St. Cecilia's Church. Mm -hmm. And um, we were, we spoke mostly French when we were small, when, you know, until we went to school and then we began to learn English and mm -hmm. so we, we were kind of bilingual. Yeah. So what <laughs> did your parents do for a living? Uh, my father was a, a, a mail carrier and he was also um, an army uh, in the reserves. He was a colonel in the reserve mm -hmm. uh, army. My mother didn't work outside, though. She had enough to do with all her children. Mm -hmm. So you went to St. Cecilia's for elementary school. Where'd you go to high school? I went in Fitchburg at St. Bernard's High School. Uh -huh. And what year did you graduate? In 1939. While you were uh, attending uh, St. Bernard's, uh, were you aware of what was happening overseas? Yes, to some degree we did. I don't think we uh, were as uh, fearful of what was going to happen because we were so wrapped up in our mm -hmm. young happenings and things that we uh, were happy with, you know, and. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it really hit me, uh, the war, until after I graduated from high school and uh, began to work. And then I was hearing more and more about it. Mm -hmm. Also, I was a telephone operator, and we handled uh, calls from uh, a servicemen from Fort Devens, and they would, you know, would call. Uh, uh, all around the world, and, uh -huh. <laughs> and then we also handled incoming calls from veterans, mm -hmm. uh, not veterans, soldiers mm -hmm. that were, you know, and uh, we had to put through calls for them. And uh, well, a little side story here is I had a son mm -hmm. in the service, and he was in Vietnam, <laughs> and I was able to get through to him and talk with him and surprise the daylights out of him. <laughs> and, well, so. let's get let's get back a few years yeah. to you. We'll, we'll take yeah. up your son later. No. Um, so you work, uh, where did you work? At the t uh, telephone company. Mm-hmm. At uh, New England Tell. Okay. And I, I started off as an operator and then I worked in the business office the last two years that I worked. Do you remember uh, where what you were doing when Pearl Harbor was attacked on December 7th? Uh, that was on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was going out with a young man from Boston and we were visiting uh, my aunt and uncle. And we were sitting there uh, talking and we had, my uncle had turned the radio on and we heard the news then. And we were all shocked.
did you know where Pearl Harbor was? Not at first, I didn't, but um, I had a friend, uh, a young man who was stationed there, and uh, I sort of knew a little bit about it. It was, in, uh, and when I heard that uh, Pearl Harbor had been struck, I he's the first person I thought of, mm -hmm. and I called his mother. Um, she was uh, in Bellows Falls, Vermont, and I called her and asked if she had heard from him. Mm -hmm. And she said yes, and he's fine. Oh, that's good. And mm -hmm. um, but she said that there was a lot of damage there, mm -hmm. and he would write to her again, you know, and let her know. Mm -hmm. And so we began a sort of a friendship, her mm -hmm. and I. <laughs> Do you remember uh, the name of your friend and his mother? Yes, it was uh, Donald mm -hmm. Jacobs. His name was Donald Jacobs. His mother's dad, and his mother was Sadie Jacobs. They lived in Bellows Falls, Vermont. Mm -hmm. okay. So according to this, uh, you went to the military in 1943. Were you were uh, in working for the telephone company until that time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything else about the time during World War II before you went to the military, rationing or? home front stuff? I don't know if we had had, if, if there was any rationing. I don't remember it. We probably mm -hmm. did, but I don't, I don't remember anything mm -hmm. about it uh, before I went in the service. I remember that after I was in the service, my mother talked about it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I'm glad I'm in the service. I can eat a lot more than <laughs> <you can." laughs> So. They fed us very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, well, just segue right into your time in the service. <laughs> Where and when did you enter the military? Uh, well, when it was in, uh, I think I have the date yeah. somewhere mm -hmm. in here, 1943, I think. Uh -huh. Was that 42? Uh, what made you go into the service? Well, my father was a colonel, and uh, he was in the reserves. I had a brother who was a colonel in the regular mm -hmm. army, and a, another brother who was in the Navy. And I wanted to, I always was under that kind uh -huh. of uh, uh, condition yeah. where, where I knew people in the service and mm -hmm. I was interested in it. And I always thought, well, if I was a boy, I'd join <laughs> the Army, just like my father. So, uh, did so, your father serve during uh, World War II? He did. He was. Uh, Post commander at uh, the uh, uh, Portland uh, Harbor Defenses of Portland, Maine, and uh, he was uh, post commander there mm -hmm. at the beginning of the war. But he uh, was retired after that. Mm -hmm. He was getting a little too old to be. Yeah. A, and uh, your brother, the colonel. My brother was a colonel, and he was stationed in Virginia, and I can't remember the name of the place mm -hmm. in Virginia. And what was your brother's name? Charles. Charles? Mm, Charles Maxfield. Mm -hmm. And your other brother in the Navy? And his name was Gerard. Gerard? Gerard Maxfield, okay. yeah. yeah. And what did he do? And he, well, he, I, I really don't know. I know he was in the Navy, mm -hmm. and he was stationed in Australia. Australia, okay. Yeah. And he married an Australian girl. <laughs> and he was he and just kind of stayed out there. <laughs> brought her. No, no he, he brought he her, brought her mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get back to you. So you have this nice military tradition coming in. And you remember where uh, you went to the military? Well, I had to, um, I, I remember that I had to go to Worcester mm -hmm. to um, sign up you know, to join, and uh, they uh, s sent me my orders a, f a week later, I think, and I had to meet, uh, meet with some officers in Springfield, Mass. And we stayed there, uh, these other girls who were going with me, mm -hmm. we, we all stayed in, in a hotel for a night, and then get, we got our orders the next day, 
and we had all our train tickets and everything, and we had to go to Ruston, mm -hmm. Louisiana for our basic training. Now, was, was this your first time away from home? For that distance, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell us what that was like. I, I liked it. I, I have to, it was very a very nice adventure for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I mean, how was, uh, what was Ruston, Louisiana like? Well, that was a small town, and mm -hmm. we were on an, uh, an army base, so it wasn't a very pretty place. It was, you know, mm -hmm. just strictly army barracks and, right. and uh, not too exciting. Mm -hmm. well, tell us what BASIC was like. BASIC was, was fun. I found it a lot of fun. It was, we learned so many things, and we, we had to learn how to march, and mm -hmm. we had to do KP and, and all these things, mm -hmm. you know, and it was, we just thought it was fun. <laughs> okay. Did you get any advanced training beyond BASIC? Uh, yes, I went to, um, if I can remember, the United Radio and Television Institute in Newark, New Jersey. And I was there for three months learning all radio mm -hmm. uh, repair and maintenance and all that. Did you have any kind of technical leanings before that? Or? Well, the Army does things very strangely. Uh -huh. I worked in communications, mm -hmm. telephone company. Of course. So they put me in communication. <laughs> Instead Not what of a I telephone, wanted. you got a radio. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't what I wanted, but uh -huh. that's what I got. What did you want? I wanted to work in an office. Okay. <laughs> Which I did later on, but uh -huh. uh, I, they sent me to radio school, uh -huh. and I had to build a super heterodyne set. <laughs> what radio. is that? You, you might not want to write. I had to learn how to build a radio. Uh -huh. And... Um, make it work and all saw that and uh, we had to learn signals and mm -hmm. uh, all this radio business you know mm -hmm. and uh, so then I was assigned to um, uh, 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 Big Spring Bombardier Training School which uh, and I, w I had to work on radios on the planes. Uh -huh. I had to uh, maintain, you know, uh, maintain the radios. I had to go in every day and pre-flight pre the radios, get them ready for the trainer planes to go out. Uh -huh. And if there was any, uh, any trouble with the radios, we had to take the radios out, bring them into the mm -hmm. workshop, and repair them. How big were the radios? Oh, they were just, mm -hmm. they were just radios that fit into the uh -huh. planes, you know, not, not and Were they big. heavy? Did they have tubes? Or? Oh, yeah, they had tubes mm -hmm. and things in them, but they weren't that heavy. Okay. Tell us what happened next. Well, um, I worked, uh, I worked on radios for, mm -hmm. uh, oh, about a year and a half. And I think the, the highlight of that was when Bob Hope came to uh, mm -hmm. entertain us, and I had to go and fix the radio on his plane. <laughs> okay, well, you, first of all, were you still in New Jersey? No, or? no, no, okay. I was in Big Spring, Big Spring, Big Spring Army Air Force Base in Texas. In Texas, and where is that? In Big Spring, Texas, and the, the, the hand, you know, the, the panhandle is yeah, here. Uh -huh. It's at the bottom of the panhandle. Oh, okay. It's near Lubbock, if you've ever heard of Lubbock. I've heard of Lubbock, okay. okay. And, so, and about when did Bob Hope visit? Oh, heavens, I don't remember. Um, about 1944, would you say? Probably, uh, yeah. Okay. It, you know the troop. We had mm -hmm. we had entertain uh, entertainment like that every once in a while. Mm -hmm. People would come in and and uh, he came with his troop. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and, and did you personally meet Bob Hope? Yes, I did, because mm -hmm. he was coming out of his plane when I uh -huh. went over to fix it, the radio. And he just, he just mentioned something like, hope you fix my radio, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and he had a, a beard, uh, not a beard, but a, a what do you call it, a five o'clock shadow. Oh, okay, yeah. And he looked so tired. Mm -hmm. And I thought, the poor man, and he's supposed to entertain us. <laughs> oh, dear. But they got him all cleaned up for uh -huh. the evening, and he, he did a great job yeah. entertaining us <laughs> with his troupe. Yeah. Right. So, uh, anything else about your time in Texas? Well, um, let's see, I was in Texas all the time that I was in the service, mm -hmm. except for the training. And I, I, hey, I didn't want to work on radios. I, I wanted to work in an office. And I kept hounding them all the time, going to my, my uh, chief officer and mm -hmm. uh, tell them, why can't I work in an office? That's what I want to do. And finally, about a year and a half before I uh, was discharged, mm -hmm. I was called in one day and, and asked if I wanted to work as a secretary to a, an officer. Uh, hurrah! <laughs> <laughs> what was your rank at the time? I was a sergeant. Okay. Well, I had made sergeant mm -hmm. just about that time when I went in there, and and uh, that's what I stayed at mm -hmm. until I uh, got out of the service. You mentioned, of course, the entertainment and that you were fed well. Yeah. Uh, anything else about uh, life in the army? Well, it was it was fun. In a, in a lot of ways, we were, you know, uh, we were in barracks where we were 50 girls in, a, in one area. Were, the barracks were two stories high, and we had 50 on each floor. Mm -hmm. They were quite large, and we had bunk beds, and um, I slept on the bottom bunk, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... Uh, we had a, a day room where we entertained. If we w were lucky enough to be dating one of the mm -hmm. servicemen, <laughs> and we had dances there, and uh, well, we had entertainment anyway. Like Bob Hope and other people came in and at, at the base, and uh, we also had. Uh, Oh heavens! I don't know how to describe all these things. I've I've lost all the uh, That's okay. nomenclature. <laughs> um, but we had this huge hall, and uh, it was for all the service people on the base. And uh, we had dances there, and uh, entertainment. Mm -hmm. And we'd go there on Saturday nights, and there would always be a little band playing. Sometimes it was just some of the servicemen that played instruments and they would yeah. play for us. And we'd dance and we were lucky enough to be asked to dance. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the, uh, the extent of all the, mm -hmm. the things that we did on the base. Now, one interesting thing that you might like to hear is that I, uh, we went into uh, Big Spring itself and there was a, a you know, what they call the a building there for uh, service people. Mm -hmm. I don't, I forget what they call them. Like a USO? Yeah, something like that. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, I, I would go there occasionally, and I got to meet some of the people from the town. And there was a man there named Shine Phillips. Mm -hmm. And he's an author, and he had written several books about Texas, and uh, got to know him pretty well. And he asked me to do some typing for him, type some of his manuscripts. And so I, I did that for a little while on the side, mm -hmm. <laughs> on my days off. So you were working in an office uh, on the base. Yes. Uh, any particular uh, duties, or just a lot well, of typing was, and filing? Uh, typing, 
I worked for the, uh, if I can remember the whole name now, uh, Information and Education Office. It was called the uh, Information and Education. We had, uh, at the time that I was in, we organized, and I think it started on our base, mm -hmm. what they call the USAFI program, USAFI, United States Armed Forces Institute. Uh -huh. And what we did was we would have any of the personnel who wanted to go to college after they were retired, um, we would uh, take all their information, all the schooling they had, all the the army schools that they went to, and we would prepare these um, all the papers for them to take to whatever uh, colleges they wanted to go to, or we would mail them to the college so that they would have credit for all the things they had done. That sounds very service. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So they got credit for any schooling or mm -hmm. anything that they did in the service. That would help them all through college. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that we did. Plus, we did a lot of newspaper work. We uh, wrote things about the people on the base and what they were doing and, and what was going on on the base, uh -huh. you know, and anything that, any information we could let out. Wow. Some, uh -huh. some information was classified, so we couldn't, mm -hmm. you know, but uh -huh. uh, whatever was available. People uh, in the town liked to know what we were doing on the base, mm -hmm. and so that was kind of a nice thing to have. Mm -hmm. So. Sounds a bit like Native Labs. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what that's what I did most of the time until I got out of the service. And when the war ended, we had the choice of uh, re-enlisting or we could go home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they would, you know, we'd get our papers and just mm -hmm. uh, be discharged. Right. So did you re-up or you decided well, to go I home? Well, I wanted to, but... I wanted to very badly, mm -hmm. and I almost did. But my mother, I you know, I would call my mother quite often, and mm -hmm. and she said, "Now I hope you don't have any thoughts in your head about reenlisting because your two brothers are reenlisting, and I don't want any more of my children <laughs> being away from home." <laughs> so <sighs> I I kind of listened to her. I I. I had mixed feelings. I wanted to come home, but then again, I didn't. Uh -huh. but yeah, I think when, once I got used to the Army, I didn't think I'd be happy mm -hmm. anywhere else. But I knew I had a job because the telephone company just, they just take you back at whatever level you would be if you had stayed in. And, and uh, so I had a lot of seniority by going back to the telephone company. Uh -huh. And uh, so I, I went home. Okay. <laughs> So when were you discharged? Uh, oh my, I was discharged after, it was after the war, so mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact date. Okay. I probably have it on the paper somewhere. Uh, so it's 1945? Yeah, okay. that sounds right. Yeah. Do you remember, by the way, uh, when the day the war ended, like VE day or VJ day? Oh yeah, when, when uh, well, when, uh, when VJ day uh, happened, I think it was the most exciting we were all screaming and hollering and running around and <laughs> making noise and mm -hmm. and we had a big party at night and the we it, it was just very exciting everybody wanted to go home you know mm -hmm. and uh, so that was we knew that when the war ended we didn't have to stay in anymore mm -hmm. but you so wanted to but uh, I, mama put her foot down <laughs> i wanted to i but the the other thing too is that I didn't know where, I knew that our base would close because it wasn't one of the big bases and, and it was just for training and they wouldn't be training any more bombardiers after the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know where I'd be sent. And I had mixed feelings, like I wanted to stay in but I didn't want to go and have to get all this new stuff again. And so I, I worried about it for a while and then finally I said oh I'll go home I can always re-enlist if I want mm -hmm. to and so I 
took my discharge. And what rank were you when you sergeant. you were still a sergeant? Okay. I was I was called into the office several times, and asked if I wanted to go to uh, officer training school mm -hmm. because I had had very good marks on all the tests that I had taken. But I hesitated because I didn't want to start having to meet new people all over again and. I was happy where I was, and I, I just said, no, I think I'll just stay here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so back to Massachusetts you came. Yeah. And, what uh, was that like? Well, uh, at first it was awful. I, I didn't like coming home, and I, it just didn't seem right, you know, not to be in barracks and be with all the girls. And mm -hmm. it was just very strange. Although my, we had such a big family that we had a lot of people there anyway. <laughs> and my brothers came home for a while, but they re-enlisted, so they were the, 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 the two brothers that mm -hmm. I talked about. I had eight brothers in all. But mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, anyway, then I came home and I went back to work at the telephone company. And my husband, who had been in some of the big battles of the mm -hmm. war, he had been in in uh, Africa and Italy, and uh, uh, he was uh, he was a good friend of mine. We had been friends for a long mm -hmm. time. I met him, I think, when I was sixteen, and uh, he knew that I was home, and he always wanted to go steady with me, mm -hmm. so. That's what happened. What we was your husband's name? Lawrence. L-A-W-R-E-N-C-E. Lawrence White. And what uh, branch did he serve in? He served in the Army. Okay. And uh, do you remember a little bit more about him? About the service? Uh, about when he was in the service. Oh, no, I don't know too much about it. I know he didn't He didn't want to talk about it, for one really? thing. Really? Okay. And then finally he let, you know, he just said that he had been to Africa mm -hmm. and then into Italy when, at the, when they first went into Italy. The, he was one of the first of the troops that went in. Mm. And, um, of course, the Germans were still there, and that was pretty hairy for a mm -hmm. while. But he stayed in the Italy for the rest of the war, and uh, well, didn't last too long after that, I don't mm -hmm. think. And um, he came home. He worked for the he worked for the tel uh, the uh, post office. Uh, he worked at the post office. Yeah. Now you were mentioning that uh, while you were in the service, especially when you were stationed in Texas, you had a lot of friends. Oh, yeah. Did you keep in touch with any of them? I did for a while, but it seemed that once we got married mm -hmm. and we started having children, we didn't have time to be writing as much, and it kind of faded out. Aww. And so. I've lost touch with all of them and mm -hmm. have no idea mm -hmm. if they're even living anymore. There was one girl who was in the service with me who came from Natick. Really? And uh, she came to visit me. Uh, she had married in the service. She had married a, a young man in the service. and. Uh, at the time, she was living in Natick, but they were talking about moving somewhere, and I, I didn't hear from her anymore uh -huh. after that. Do you remember her name? Uh, let me see if I can think of her name. I can picture her. Mm -hmm. So uh, she was kind of mannish woman. Uh, oh my goodness, what was her name? It'll well, probably come to me well, while she's I'm... Well, she's from Natick. Chances are she's on our veterans' wall in the library just outside. <laughs> so yeah. maybe you can point her out. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, okay, it's after the war. You're back in Central Mass. You're with yeah. the phone company. When did you marry Lawrence? Uh, well, uh, we uh, married him in 1946. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. October 1946, October 5th. Mm hmm. And you had children. And uh, yeah, I had, uh, well, we had a, a little girl about uh, 14 months after we were married, and 
she was eight months at, at eight months uh, she took sick and she had severe convulsions and oh. went into a coma and she was at children's hospital and she was in a coma for 14 months before she died oh i'm sorry to hear that yeah and then i had two boys and then i had two girls mm -hmm. and then i had another little boy and he took sick at seven months and uh, he uh, lost his eyesight and he lost his just lost everything after a while. He couldn't walk mm -hmm. or talk or do mm -hmm. anything. And he lived for another um, 14, I, not 14 months. He, no, he lived until he was 17 years old, mm -hmm. but he was completely disabled. So he had to be hospitalized all that time. Mm -hmm. And then he died and so that's... Yeah. Couldn't my condolences. That's that's losing children's never an easy thing. No, no, it isn't. Okay, so you mentioned early in the interview you did have a son who served in Vietnam. Can you tell me a little more about him? Well, uh, his name is Kevin, mm -hmm. and uh, he joined the service and he went to he went to Vietnam. And I don't know too much about it because he doesn't talk about it. And uh, I know that I put a call through to talk to him mm -hmm. while I was working at the telephone company and surprised him. He said he was on the line and somebody, one of the sergeants yelled, hey, <laughs> hey, Maxie, I know, hey, Whitey. He said, hey, Whitey, uh, your mother's on the phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. He said, it was kind of funny being on the front line and being told you had a telephone call. <laughs> so. He said that was that was kind of hairy, but mm -hmm. anyway, we, we right. talked for a little while, and, okay. and uh, he came home. Um, you know, I think he was in the service maybe four years or so. And, mm -hmm. <clears throat> How important was it for you to serve in the military when you did? It was very important. I, I of course, I came from. I always said an army family because of my father and my brother being colonels, and I loved the service. I lo I used to go to visit my dad when he was uh, in the summer. He used to go to CMTC camp. Mm -hmm. He was an officer, and uh, I'd go there and watch him and see all the things he did. And I was, mm -hmm. and I always wished I wish I was a boy so I could join the service. And then when the wax mm -hmm. came out, I, that's what I was, I said, well, now I can go, you know. But um, I was so proud of my father. I just thought it was wonderful that he was, he was an officer and was in charge of, he was in charge of the uh, harbor defenses of Portland, I guess I told mm -hmm. you that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I always loved going where he was serving. And, mm -hmm. Uh, um, I don't think we uh, was asking. Uh, what's your father's name? Arthur. Arthur. Okay. Maxfield. Mm. Okay. Now, when you were serving, you were obviously in a non-combat position. Uh, mm. What do you think about women serving in the military these days? Well, I I think what we did was better. I think we did all the things that they could release the, so the men for. I don't like the idea of women serving on the front lines with the men. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't. I just. I, I just don't understand it, and I, mm -hmm. I don't like it. But that's not for me to say. <laughs> okay, uh, Claire. Is there anything else about your time in the service you'd like to uh, discuss? Bring up. Well. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, I can say mm -hmm. that. I, I truly enjoyed the service, and I'm very proud that I served. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I had to do it over again, I would do it. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would be very happy doing that. And if, if, if my daughters had wanted to go in the service, I would have said, great. Mm -hmm. But they never chose to go, mm -hmm. and I never 
told them they had to. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> and uh, so it, it was a nice mm -hmm. experience, and I felt like I was doing something mm -hmm. for my country, and uh, it, it felt good to do that. Is there any other like memorable characters or memorable moments you'd like to uh, talk about? Well, um, I guess I mentioned Shine Phillips. Yep. Yeah. Then he was mm -hmm. a writer. He was he was a very interesting person. He he was all Texan, mm. <laughs> Texan through and through, mm -hmm. and uh, he uh, wrote about the Texas that in the area that I knew. Mm -hmm. And um, that was kind of exciting. I like that. And um, well, when when I went in, you know, I had heard you always hear so many funny things about the soldiers having to do KP, and I didn't know what KP was, you know, kitchen police. Mm -hmm. And so when I went in, and we had to do KP, and I had fun doing it. I <laughs> just. Uh, what is all the squawking about? You know, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you grew up in a big family. Of course you did yeah. KP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I never minded uh, mm -hmm. having to do KP, which just happened while we were in training. I didn't, uh, I didn't have to do KP after that. But um, it was just kind of mm -hmm. just well, Claire, a fun thing to do. Claire, is there anything else uh, before we wrap it up? Um, I don't, I, I can't. Mm -hmm think of anything else. So that's about it, I guess. Okay. Well, Claire White, thank you so very much for <laughs> taking part in the Natick Veterans Oral History Project. Oh, thank, thank you. And mm -hmm. I hope uh, I hope I have informed you enough. <laughs> oh, I think you were